Hello guys, now it's time for the long awaited video when I rank the series with probably one of the most Hello. utmost, most confusing story arc, terrible characters, and probably just one of the most annoying typical Stephen Moffat seasons. Now, as I rank my episodes in my rank order, let's please, before I start, bring on the hate and the dislikes because I'm sure there's going to be, unless you're really nice. You have no idea how prepared I am for this video, I've even got my list of each episode down, um, because of numbering and I'll get quite easily confused, because I've not really done anything like this before. Anyway, um, so yeah, I will be including the Christmas special because I want to just, you know, do the series as a whole. Um, so at number 13, yes, um, I am expecting a lot of people to be annoyed about this, but it is going to be the husband of River Song. The husbands of River Song, sorry. I, I'm sorry, but I, I, ju I just can't like it. If I'm 100% honest, I don't see what people like about it. I really don't. I mean, as many times as people explain to me, I just don't see why it's so great and why people like it. Because I think it was... I think it was boring. I mean, it weren't really that interesting. I mean, none of... I was not intrigued by it at all. And I really didn't care how it was going to end. Like, I mean, like... I didn't like, the co I thought the comedy was awful, um, the Doctor just wasn't overly likeable in this story, which is quite upsetting to say, I love Capaldi's Doctor, um, Red Song just came back for the sake of just being annoying, uh, there was no new dynamic between the Twelfth Doctor and River, it was exactly the same, so I don't so we weren't promised what was said and wasted actors like so many actors like Matt Lucas and Greg Davis fantastic actors which just were given absolutely naff to do um, and it was just terrible and I just really didn't like it and I'm sorry but that is going to be my bottom episode because I just didn't like it like at all um, what would I rate it I would probably rate it about, I'd probably rate it about a 3.5, I mean it was close enough to be in a 4, but I'm being polite and I'm going to give it a 3.5, um, generally because it just had so many problems and we've had a lot better, I mean on the bright side it wasn't so fifth, but no, sorry, not for me. And of course for number 12, Hellbent. Probably one of the most awful and most disappointing finales that we've had probably since the wedding of River Song. It was just, again, I mean, it's an episode where people are just blinded for its um, fan service. That's all this episode was. It was like a big fan fest of an episode, but it, and then it sort of turned into a big fan fiction which you could probably read online from some weird, twisted fangirl. I mean, that was exactly what it was like. I mean, it was just awful. I mean, the first 20 minutes, brilliant. You know, especially when the Twelfth Doctor's acting all dark, he's acting mysterious, you're not quite sure what he's going to do, he's not got any dialogue throughout, but then, obviously, he when he gets his dialogue, he is just badass. But then, when it when it comes to Kara coming back, no surprise, it was just it it I just lost it then. I think my whole brain just went like, what what has this got to do with Gallifrey? I sort of went, I sort of paused for a minute, went, hang on a minute. This episode, we've just got back to Gallifrey. The Doctor has found Gallifrey and he's just left it again for Clara. A 
Am I the only one that thinks that's stupid? Like, oh. This is like what we've wanted probably since Series 8, and the fact that it's happened, and then it's... Oh, I don't, I don't know. And the fact that Clara's got a bloody diner, I mean, Christ, I just don't... God, it's actually making my head hurt just thinking about this terrible episode. It was just awfully, awfully bad. I would actually rate this episode a 5, though. A 5 out of 10, definitely. Generally because, yeah, it's bad, but I think we've had worse. I think I'd, I can just say, thanks to that 20 minutes, it just saved the episode. But, oh, blimey. Um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, there's no more to talk about that episode, that shine that was put on the telly, in my opinion. Sorry, just needed to be said. Sleep no more, obviously. Like, ugh. More like, sleep more, never mind the no. It was just, I'm not just, the f it was just the fact it was boring. I have never been bored with Doctor Who, like, like this. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I said, I know I said that the Christmas special was quite boring, but at least there was something happening. With this, I just felt great concept, but it just wasn't delivered correctly. I just, I knew it was Mark Gatiss, I knew I, w I was expecting disappointment, but nowhere near as this. I just thought, bloody hell, and it's bloody sleep dust. Uh, how, how can the Doctor take that seriously, how can anyone take that seriously, I just thought it was the most dumbest idea, I mean it wasn't clever, it wasn't scary, it was just stupid, I was just like, next time they'll be saying that the poo out of our arse is an evil creature that's going to attack the whole entire earth, god that's series 10 summed up, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I'd give that a 4 out of 10. I mean, I don't think there's been any episodes, apart from the Husbands of River Song, that's been overly bad, like, beyond scale of awful. I just think they've just been a bit... <clears throat> forget what I mean, a bit... Meh. Um, the Girl Who Died. Um, again, I thought, this episode, like, what the hell was going on with the BBC? Like, this episode got the most promotion, the most advertisement. This was, like, the big one. It had Maisie flipping Williams in it, because they couldn't make it any more bloody obvious that she was in it. It was all over mags, all over telly. You couldn't get enough of Maisie Williams. Except she does absolutely nothing in the story. She, the character was boring, it was flat. Every character was flat in the story. Maya, wasted villains, which looked fantastic, but... I was just like, oh my god, how how could they not get this right, just really? And then, we get another immortal person in the Stephen Moffat era, it's not like we've got dozens of them or anything, Christ, just cannot get enough of immortal people. Like, I am actually bored and sick to death of people coming back to life and just be oh magic no all I can say is I just want a character to just die and just stay dead please that's Stephen Moffat's mission for series 10 kill someone and let them die thank you uh, but yeah I would rate that I'd definitely I'd probably rate that four as well because that wasn't brilliant. Um The Woman Who Lived much better. I really, really liked The Woman Who Lived. I mean I know a lot of people were quite iffy on it and I I'm not being funny. I I've watched it a few times and I actually really really like it. I mean some of the moments I'm not overly keen on but I really, really, really like it. I mean I really like the dynamic between the children and Doctor, I thought they worked really well. The story was generally quite good. I felt that the whole lying dude was a bit pointless. I mean, it wasn't quite... It was just there to be the threat. I mean, if they got rid of that, I think the episode would have been perfect. 
Originally, I gave it an 8, but I think I was being a bit over with the hype, but I'd probably give it about a 7, because I generally think it was that good of a story. The reason it's this low is generally because I think there's been better ones that we've had, like, during. But yeah, good, 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 good story. I'm sorry if I keep looking at my paper, it's just the numbers, you know, all these numbers in here. Um, the Magician's Apprentice, I would put next. Blimey, what an episode. I mean, so much went in it, but however, despite how much I loved it on first viewing, um, yeah, I mean, a lot has changed, like, my opinion has changed, like, so much. I mean, there's, I've realised there's quite a lot of flaws with it. I think, although I really enjoyed it, I do feel that there was way too much going on. Like, I feel that as much, as great as it was to have that, I feel that Stephen Moffat put so much into the opening episode, there wasn't really much else to go on with the rest of the series. But yeah, I really liked it. Although some of it was very recycled. I mean, now that I look back on it, I sort of feel like, you know, I swear this is ringing a bell. I swear we've seen this before, if you get what I mean, which has pretty much been the whole series of mine. Um, you know, but I really, really liked it. I thought it was a fantastic story. Twelfth Doctor, brilliant. Davros is back. Fantastic, brilliant twist. Yeah. And Coley's staff, I mean, come on, I mean, what, bring him back, I mean, he's, he was awesome. Okay, um, The Witch is Familiar, I mean, I'd put this over generally because of the scenes with the Doctor and Davros himself. I think the Twelfth Doctor and Davros, the chemistry between the two characters was just, oh my god, it was just so good. Like, the amount of fan moments I had with watching this was brilliant, I mean, I, I just, it was, was my dream come true, to see my favourite all-time villain with one of my all-time favourite Doctors, it was just fantastic, and I really applause the scenes. Wait, I didn't give Magician's Apprentice a rating, oh yeah, Magician's Apprentice 7.5, sorry, just Magician's time. but yeah, so yeah, I'd probably give the same with The Witches Familiar, I'd give that a 7.5 as well, because it is generally a good story. It's a story that I could happily watch now and then. Um, yeah. At number six, but this is going to surprise everyone, will be the Zygon Inversion. Don't know where that accent was going. Um, reason I've put that is I think the Zygon two-parter is a very, very, very overrated Story. I mean, I am absolutely sick to death now of people going, Oh, that brilliant Zygon story, that fantastic, brilliant speech, best Doctor Who ever. No. Sorry. I mean, as much as I like the speech, one speech does not make Doctor Who brilliant, okay? I'm just saying. Um, but I, I, I just really like it. I just really like the Zygon... Um, the Zygon 2 part as a whole, but I mean, with Zygon Inversion, a lot of stuff that I liked with Zygon Invasion wasn't included. I mean, first of all, the Zygons weren't given a lot to do. I mean, they, they're like very pushed to the side, not a lot is happening. Um, the Doctor is a bit more present, because I felt that in the previous part he wasn't as present, but in this he's a lot more like the Doctor, if you will. Um, but Bonnie, oh my god, why, why is she called Bonnie? Oh, I just find it a bit stupid that the Doctor done a big, huge speech about war, and which is great, but then it turns out there was nothing in the box, and you sort of feel like, what was the point of that, like, eight, six to eight minutes? Like, but I really like the episode because it has a hidden meaning, and I love programs like that. I love films and TV shows that include that, so I'm really happy that they've done that. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely give that, I'd probably give that a 6 actually, I'd probably give that episode a good 6 out of 10, because I thought that was quite good. 
Zygon Invasion. Brilliant story, really, really liked it. Um, some of the comedy was quite awful. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I liked it. I really did. I mean, I liked the fact that Zygons being your disguised as your loved ones, I thought that was a fantastic, interesting idea. And it was global. I mean, clearly they had quite a good budget for this, you know, going to, you know, New Mexico, here, there, everywhere. It was brilliant. And it felt like an invasion, which is, we haven't had a story like that for a long, long time. So it was quite nice to have a proper, like, story. But I just felt the Zygon version just sort of wrecked what was perfect. But there's one thing that ruined it. It's called Moffat. But yeah, I'd, I'd probably give the Zygon Invasion a 6.5. Jenny, it could have got a 7, but it didn't. So, yeah. At number 4 has got to be Face the Raven. I love Face the Raven, despite how terrible the title sequence was out of sync. <laughs> Probably the worst I've ever seen it. It was great, really. I I thought it was just such a beautifully written episode. So emotional and so outgoing. I just thought, my god, this is it. This is like... This is just beautiful. But then Hell Bank comes along and ruins it. But yeah, I really liked it, the whole Trap Street thing. I love Ritsugi coming back. I thought that was quite good. And yeah, I, I just really, 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 really enjoyed it. So I definitely give that one hands down a 7.5. Because I generally thought it was a really good story. Now onto my last three. Blimey. Oh my voice, I really hope I'm not just blabbing on. My third favourite episode of Series 9 would be Before the Flood. Um, I love Before the Flood. Um, Before the Flood, I thought, was a great story. Despite the Fisher Kim being very underused, I thought he looked fantastic. I mean, very much like a classic series villain. I don't know why, but the scene between the Doctor and the Fisher Kim really reminds me of, like, the Doctor and Zutek in Pyramids of Mars. You know, it was just nice, because I always like it when the Doctor goes face to face to the big baddie, and they have that big, long piece of dialogue, and the Doctor is, like, trying to act really heroic with this powerful being. I just love that. Um, but, yeah, definitely a good, good story. And I am not being funny, I'd actually give this a good 8 out of 10, because I generally really like it. And the rocker theme is just a bit pointless, but good. I wasn't keen on the Doctor breaking the fourth wall, I've never been a fan of that when it comes to the television shows, but screw it, you know, it didn't affect the episode that much. I mean, obviously, number two has got to be Under the Lake. Now, Under the Lake, I thought, was a fantastic story. Um, I thought Under the Lake just... It was it was proper Doctor Who. It was my Doctor Who. It was original. It was dark. It was interesting. It really reminded me of the Robert Holmes era. And I think a lot of classic Doctor Who fans, like myself, said that. And it just really, really worked. I mean, the characters were relatable. Um, every character you felt for... It was just a really good story. I mean, despite there not being a lot happening, I think that was the good outcome of it, was the fact that it was just not loads of action-packed explosions everywhere. It was a proper plot. But my number one story... You've probably guessed it. It's going to be Heaven Sent, which is a lot of people's. I adore Heaven Sent. My God, I mean, Stephen Moffat, the only proper story he probably got right, probably since he's wrote, like, way, way back in Series 1. Like, this was going back to his early years of writing. This was a fantastic episode. I mean, not only it was just beautifully written, and the music is incredible, the Twelfth Doctor is brilliant, Capaldi, astonishing performance. Like, really, 
And, you know, I love the fact that there wasn't so much happening, because that was generally the point. It was meant to be the Doctor's hell. So I, I think if we enjoyed that, that would be a little bit weird. I mean, it didn't go to the places I wanted it to go to, but I thought it was fantastic, and it was a huge risk, and I think it worked. Um, and I really hope to have a similar story like that, because I think, you know, the Doctor by himself can work if given the right material, and that's exactly what this was given. <sighs> so... That is my Series 9 ranking. Please do comment down below yours, or do you agree with me, do you disagree with me? Um, Hannah shall be doing hers at some point. I'm not sure if I'm going to be in the video with her or not, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what she says, and I'm really looking forward to probably disagreeing what she says as well. So, Bye.